Hello peoples, how are you? This is Alexey from Ace5 Education. I'm here on behalf of CG Toots Plus and I'm making this lipstick tutorial. If you haven't watched the other parts, go watch the other parts there on the CG Toots website. This is the part where I'm going to start adding materials and lighting and showing you how to set up a studio setup so it's interactive and you know. Anyway, so let's get into it. Uh, this is the model that we finished in the last part. First thing we're going to do is we're going to want this kind of C-shaped background thing. So, let's go into our side view here. This one seems about right. Let's turn on by pressing the P key. We can enable snapping and we can enable work plane snap and we can enable grid point snap. Also, it's available here in this menu. And now let's go B spline and let's click here and then here and then here and here and you'll notice that three points together make a pretty you know a nice filleted edge and one point here and we have this nice little shape which is a spline which we'll be using for our background studio now let's make us a where is it extrude nerves stick this spline into it turn this to zero because it's the wrong way and change this to like 3000. It's extrude knob and I'm moving across. And turn off snapping because we don't need that anymore. So move it across. So it's about centered. Doesn't really matter if it's not too accurate. You can adjust it later. So let's start making some materials for this guy so when I start adding stuff, it'll make more sense. So if you double click on here in the materials panel, if you don't have it there, go Windows, Materials. Uh, wherever it is, material manager it is. Some people have it down here. I prefer to have it here. It works better on a, when you're working in one screen. So, as you'll see, my material here is just plain white. That's because if you go to attributes, uh, actually here, let's go. If you double click on it, you'll see that I only have color and no other channels and it's 100%. How you achieve that to make the default material just white is in attributes. You select, you, you know, you change all the settings you want and then you go edit and set as default. If you want more information on this, I have a Materials 101 tutorial which covers a lot of stuff about materials. You should go watch it. It's very useful. So, what materials do we need? We need the black, we need a chrome, and we need lipstick red material, and a little bit of a gold for this cap here. So, let's start with the black and the chrome and the red. So, this guy's going to be black. And then we can chocolate click and drag it. And this one's going to add reflection. It's going to be Chrome. Let's rename them while we're at it. Chrome. Black. And finally, red. Oops. Let's turn off the no, color. Red. Maybe it'll be darker red. And just drag it onto the objects that you want to have the materials. Now that there's the Chrome material, uh, it just looks like black at the moment. That's okay. Now, let's slowly start. Also, this black material, let's just add a bit of reflection to it. Turn on Fresnel. Drag this to like 9% and this to like 23%. We can tweak it later. And do the same thing for the red material. Add some reflection. Fresnel, drag it down. 2%, 14, doesn't really matter, we'll deal with that later. Now if you hit render, it doesn't really look anything useful right now. So, what we're going to do is we're going to add some reflection planes first and foremost. So, it's going to be the one on top, it's going to be like an overhead softbox. Let's add a nice 100% luminance material to it. Luminance, and let's drag it on top. And let's hold this little green dot here. Um, if you don't have see the green dot, make sure you're in one of these tools here and you're in object mode. If you're in point mode, you won't see it. And if you have any other tools enabled, you won't see it. And drag this guy out. And then go to top view and maybe drag him out a bit more like this. And now if you hit render, you'll see that you have a bit of a, you know, you have a reflections from the top plane. Maybe move him up a bit, scale him up. Hit the render button. Yeah. Move him. Back here, oops. No, now that doesn't work because he's outside of that. 
C shape. As you can see, the C shape. So render again. There we go. We have a sweet. Now let's just control C, control V him, rotate, rotate the tool here, rotate it around, scale him down, move him to the side. You know, use little green dots to reshape him into the right size. Move him out of it, maybe. And then control click and drag and make another one here. And now if you render, you see some kind of reflection starting to happen. The thing is right now we still have this front light, auto light, which isn't really working. So let's make a new light. Uh, my new default light has inverse fall off on it. So if you go to light and you go attributes, you'll see that in details, I have inverse square fall off by default. So yours would be none if you haven't changed it. And in general, I have soft maps turned on. This is just because this is how I like my default lights. I do the same thing as materials. I have it on and I go edit and set as default. Be careful though when you start using direct lights like these ones, you have to turn off the fall off otherwise it looks weird. So anyway, now that we have this light, let's move them just, just out here somewhere. Scale them up a bit. Nothing serious. And then copy and drag another one back here. And now if we hit render, we already have this nice little setup. Isn't that sweet? And it renders really quickly. And the reason we have this setup, we'll later set up stuff with global illumination and whatnot. But for now, let's add a camera actually here. Camera up so we can see what's happening in these views. For now, the purpose of this is so that we can do the following. We can go render region, no render region, interactive render region, which is actually control R, no alt R. You can turn it on and off. And then we can drag it out and we can move it here. And now what we can do is we if we have these planes, the top one for example, if we move it, we can see the effect that we have um, on like for example let's let's make let's copy this material and let's make this material say you know yellow luminance and apply it to this plane too. And let's turn off the color channel. And see straight away you can see the effect. And if we want to tweak it, we for example want to make it a bit more red. And it updates really quickly because you don't have any global illumination, you just have some standard lights and it just you know renders it out. So uh, let's not make this so insane. And as you can see, we're already we're having the right effect, like we're getting this kind of you know. Although the thing is right now the black is a bit is a bit is a, I don't like this big black gap. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this plane here and we're gonna rotate around and we're gonna move it here. As you can see already it's you can see that you know you can see the result like live as we move it around. Then we get this other plane here and we're gonna rotate this around and we're gonna move it here. Oops. Okay, uh, not on these panels. Good idea to uh, group them into one object. Right click, Cinema 4D tags, uh, compositing, compositing tag, and turn off cast shadows. There you go. Because otherwise, you sometimes have them and they block the lights or something when you have issues. So, there we go. We're having this nice little black line down the middle, which is what I was going for. I don't want this big black gap down the middle. So you can drag them out if you want. Because if you see in my example, see there's like a, but there's also a black on the edges, so it kind of gives like a zebra feel. But as you see now, we don't have the one on the side, so let's scale it down a bit and let's move it around a little bit more. Scale it down further. There you go. Now, as you can see, now we're getting this nice, like you know, another black one, so it's not so you know uniform. And also this plane, let's scale it down. Let's move it out here. See, and already getting this nice effect. Let's get our black material, tweak it a bit now. Also, you can increase the quality of this preview if you want. You know, if you make it bigger, it just renders slower. Or you can make it really bad, so you get like a live, you know, depending on how fast your computer is. This is a very effective approach. So, black material, let's see what we got here. Um, now let's just double click on it. Uh, materials have a window here. So if we hike up this middle, this 
original reflection, we will get more reflection overall. But if we hike up this one, we get more reflection on the edges. Okay, so you kind of get the highlights, which is pretty much what we want. So let's hike up here. And whenever you want a full render, just you just click it and you render and you can see what it looks like with better quality. So let's keep going with this. Um, I'm going to also tweak the lighting here because I just, I'm a stickler for like, I love good lighting. I love lighting, which I can make, you know. Let's move another one to the side here, maybe, and lower it down. And also here, I think this back panel that we have, I think it's too far away. Let's move it in closer. And now this backlight that we had, which one let's go to that. Oops. Let's maybe move it a bit. We make it smaller. Let's add some warmth to this light. Let's go attributes. Let's make it a bit yellower. There you go. And so this is so what is it? We have our key light here. This is our key light. Then we have our fill light, which is just the fill from the side. And this is meant to be our backlight, right? Let's move it off camera. There we go. Sweet. Also, the material here, let's add a just a plain white material onto the there you go, got kind of a bit of overkill, overkill there. Let's turn the strength of this guy down a bit. Uh, color, brightness. There we go. Now where's our, this is our backlight. Let's scale him down. Once again, let's to fill in more of the screen so we can see what's going on here. Let's move them off screen perhaps a bit. There we go. And where's our key light? So in this way we can set up like a very quick render and very interactive so you can set your reflection planes and you know tweak your materials and you don't have to worry about waiting five minutes for every frame to render with GI or with like some really fancy softbox render or whatever people use. So, this is how we're going well with the lid. Now, this lipstick material. As you can see in my picture there, we have this nice little glittery material on it. So, what we're gonna do, we're gonna double click on this. Uh, we're definitely gonna make it darker. And we're gonna hit up the reflection for now a little bit more. And we're gonna go out to our luminance channel. And we're gonna add, see that's not what we want, we're gonna add noise. And we're going to click on it, and we're going to select a noise like Booyah. See, we're getting there, right? And we're gonna increase the low clip. Maybe not so much. And down the high clip. So basically what we get is we get these really bright white, dot, white dots. And then we go back with this little up arrow and we just turn the brightness down to zero. And then we blend it in until we get something we like. Now, if you notice they're too big, you can always click here and you can go global scale and change it to like 40. Maybe 11, 16. Really depends on what you want. And then it, once again, you know, make it barely noticeable maybe. And there we have it. Now, uh, as you will notice, this thing is a bit too reflective, I think. So let's go back to our black material. The reflection, let's tune it down. Make it a bit more sophisticated. Because if it's too glossy, it looks kind of like candy or something. And let's rotate our lid because we need to make a gold material. Where is our lid? Puppet. Let's rotate this guy around. 
and let's go into let's turn off Alt R to turn off the render region. Let's go selection tool, select our front faces, and then go UI 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 until we have select oops uh, with our camera. Control Shift Z is undo camera move. Very useful feature. Okay, because if you remember, we set up these reflection planes. And if we move our camera out of the position where we had it, the reflection planes kind of stuff up. That seems about right. Okay, so let's go Cinema 4D tags. Oh, you can't see it off, off screen. So in case you missed the other tag, the compositing tag, it was also in Cinema 4D tags. So anyway, off Cinema 4D tags and select uh, protection. And now the camera won't move. So we'll move back soon. And since we've deselected, you know, Actually, wait, no, let's turn it off. For, let's move the camera here so we don't have those planes intersecting. Move it down a bit. Okay, and now right click Cinema 4D tags and protection. And click this little white box, and now we're in editor view again. We can turn off our render region because we don't need it. We can select our top lid again, and we can see how much we've selected. So we still haven't selected those points there, so let's go UI again. There we go. Now those faces are selected. Brilliant. And let's apply a material to it. Let's control drag out chrome. Let's call it gold. And drag it on top of this thing. <clears throat> As you can see, it automatically creates a selection tag and automatically puts in the selection here, which so if you change this for example to S1, then change this here to S1 as well. And it'll be correctly applied. Now, gold material. First step. Reflection needs color, so let's turn on, make it gold. See, closer already. Uh, it also should have some Fresnel. Let's drag it down a bit. Let's drag this down a bit too. As you can see, now the color disappears. So go here, select out this thing black, and change it to a brown, and change this to a yellow. And already. We're getting a better gold material. Actually, let's make the brown really dark brown. There we go. And let's change the color to something gold as well. Or not. No, let's keep it black. Let's just maybe hook up the reflection a bit more. It's a bit of a tweaky process. Anyway, so we have applied. Let's have a look what it looks like. Uh, back to our camera here. And Alt R. Okay, right now it doesn't look like what we need to do. It looks too yellow. I mean, too orange. So let's make the color a bit more yellow. I also, right now it's a really flat surface. Let's turn off our camera again. Alt R. What we're going to do is we're going to select these polygons here. And we're going to ever so slightly move them. Whoa, what happened there? Oh, yeah. Don't forget in attributes, when you use the move tool, object, no, modeling axis, and change, oops, modeling axis, and change this to select to object. There we go. And move this guy out a bit. And now it won't be such a flat surface when you render. So it should be a bit more. Okay, we have a bit of a curve in it now. So let's keep going with this. Uh, the color is black. Let's, let's turn this Fresnel off for a moment. Let's drag it down just to. That looks more like gold. No, not quite the elegant gold that I'm looking for. That's better, there we go. Kind of a more tame, pale gold. Let's say that's what we're looking for. Neat. Um, maybe, I don't want it to be so front on, so let's just get this top lid and uh, into the object tool mode. Let's just rotate it out a bit. And also, uh, right now the lid, it's the right size, like it fits on the lips. Remember, we're not trying to make something realistic. 
Uh, if you think the lid is too big, we can just scale it down. No one's going to pick up a virtual model and stick it on. You know, it's now. But I like it more like this. There we go. And now we have it on a much lower level. Okay, so I think material-wise, this is going pretty well. Uh, maybe not enough luminance in the little red material. Let's drag the luminance to get little speckles. Let's drag it off a bit. That's a bit better, I think. There we go. Now we can see them. Also, you notice this lid is kind of floating right now. So, throwing off. Oops. Let's rotate it a bit. Let's go into our four view mode. S to focus on an object. And let's move it down and line it with the floor. There we go. Now hit render. Not floating anymore. Okay, good. Now let's get into global illumination. Because this is going to be a still shot. Well, I mean, it might be animation, but let's deal with a still shot first. Um, you can keep tweaking these lights. I mean, uh, maybe for your project this is sufficient. Uh, if you don't like this black area, you know, uh, get some, get your key light and Move them in, or maybe add a maybe move your backlight over to the other side. That kind of blows it out a bit. There you go, it's a bit of more of a dramatic lighting. As long as you can tweak it, and you can see the results very quickly. So, uh, let's see what global illumination looks like without the lights. Let's go Control B. Let's go Effect and Global Illumination. And change this to IR QMC still image. Thing is, you remember we put we made this luminance material. So these materials are already illuminating the scene. So if we turn off all the lights and we hit render, we still get lighting. See, it's already there. It's already nice. Now there are multiple ways you can uh, keep working with this. You can use like this main material, you get a luminance, and you can yank this thing up to like, you know, like 300 and hit render. That's probably a bit too bright. So I can put it to 200 and we hit render. It, it really depends on what you're looking for. But I prefer a combination because when you do purely global illumination, the lighting lacks a certain dramatic effect. Like it doesn't, uh, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's like when you put some actual lights with shadows in, it adds a bit more drama to the scene. Like let's, I'll show you. Let's turn on our backlight. And straight away, you see you have like this kind of effect, like you have something coming in. And if you change, for example, if you make it warmer, you know, straight off, you have this kind of like strength. And let's scale this backlight up so we don't have the hot spot there. And move them out. Alrighty, how nice is that? Isn't this much nicer than just using global illumination? And let's get our fill light and turn that on. And already it's nice. And you might want to make this feel like, for example, a cold light. So it adds some contrast. Maybe more towards the blue. Just a bit cold, not so much cold. And our key light. It blows everything out of proportion. That's why we're going to go select it. We're going to drag it down to like maybe 12%. No, whoops, that's our fill light. My bad. Our key light. There we go. Let's drag the fill light down. Let's turn it on. As you can see, it's too bright, so we just drag the intensity down. And already it's getting, you know, it's, it's already a very nice product shot. Except I think this blue light needs to be this fill light, which is blue, right? So, yep. Let's scale it up a bit so that we don't have this blue, in, so we actually have a blend between the blue and the yellow. And our key light. Maybe we want to move it up a bit. And maybe we want to increase the brightness a bit now. A little bit less. I notice also global illumination renders faster when you have lights helping it out because there's a lot less like just light bouncing. There's actually, you know, directional light that, uh, I don't know the technical aspects of it, but it just renders faster. And now also when you do an animation, if you don't decide to bake it, but if you do decide to bake it, go watch my tree tutorial. 
and just bake it and then turn the reflection channels back on. Then you also have good animation, but this still works with actually animated objects because this, you know, look, we hit render on a full frame, render. I render the whole scene in like six seconds, and I don't really have it even that much of a powerful computer. Well, I'm looking at this main scene. I want to get the key light, and I want to make it warmer. Let's give it some warmth. Much nicer. Okay, sweet. So, yeah, global illumination plus lights gives you a much better result because you can control its, you know, dramatic kind of like right now, for example, let's get let's let's get this key light, let's take it down to twelve percent and it's fill light and also take it down to like forty percent. Maybe even less. And get this backlight and let's hook it up to like 128%. See and now we have this kind of like you know this force coming in from the side. It's like it's you know when you have like it has like you need contrast in images. You need to have you need to go from something that's bright on one side, dark on the other, and it gives more mystique. It, it, you know, like something's appearing, or there's like what's on the right. It's like even if you're doing a product shot, you know, try to tell like a story. So, uh, yeah, that's my point. Try to try to give something to the audience to be interested in, like something that's off screen, something sort of you know suggests that there's more to it. Um, yeah, but it's once again, it's up to you. You know, you can drag these up and. Key light, fill light, and you have more regular studio shot. Also works well. Now I'm looking at this lipstick. I want to make it slightly darker than it is. No, it up. Just right. So yeah, there you have it. This is how we create our lighting for our Awesome lipstick. Ta da! Uh, the animation part of it that I showed you in the beginning is really quite simple. Uh, let's get this. Where is it? Uh, stick thingy. Turn off Alt R to turn off render region. And basically, we just hit the. We, hit, we go to frame 25, for example. We hit a keyframe. Go back to frame zero, we move it down, we rotate around, and we hit the keyframe key, and now it moves up and down. And let's make a null object, a null object, and place the camera into the null object. Now it's frame 25 uh, on the null object, hit the keyframe, we go to frame zero, rotate the null object, and hit keyframe. Now, as you can see, we see this light, these things which we don't want to see. These are our reflection planes. So let's just go into this thing, into this tag, and go scene by camera. And theoretically, when we hit render, it shouldn't come up. Nope, it doesn't. See? And when we click and drag and rotate it, there we go, it comes up. So uh, if we hit the, I'll hit the render button. Uh, let's go. Actually, I'll show you. render settings, output, and go from 0 to 25. And let's make this like 800, so it's a bit faster. Turn off save, and let's hit render. It won't be saved, it's okay. And as you can see, it renders, it's okay, the speed's like, it's not a second per frame like you would have without GI, but it's still, you know, five seconds a frame, more than acceptable. Let's just I'm going to pause this and come back. And we're back. Uh, and this is our animation. The whole thing rendered on my computer in like two minutes. And I don't have a powerful computer. My computer is pretty much the cheapest quad core you can get. I tend to go through them quickly. Um, so yeah, it's, and you know, mostly five seconds a frame. This is totally usable for animation. You know, it's, so yeah, there you have it. This is, your tutorial on how to make a lipstick, how to model it, how to set up a studio. <clears throat> and really it's like the way I set this up, like studios, you have to look at actual other product shots and then see where they put reflections, like find something reflective 
and try to figure out what the studio looks like. And then you can recreate it in 3D, regardless of what kind of studio it is, like on cars and stuff. And look at tutorials, uh, like instead of always looking how to light in 3D, look at tutorials on how photographers set up product shots. Like there's a lot of them out there. Like there's like, you know, a lot of uh, tutorials about, how what's it called? Like rogue photographer, not rogue. Uh, got these guys who take photos in the streets with like light boxes. Guerrilla photographers, that's right. Yeah, it's like G-U-E-R-I-L-L-A. And, you know, and they will tell you about how they set up the studio shots. And this is what you have to recreate in 3D. Then there's just, you know, you balance it with reflection planes and lights and you have more control because your reflection plane doesn't actually have to generate light and the lights come from somewhere else. So you have a bit more freedom in that sense. But the ideas are the same. Like this is like a typical studio setup. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Go check it out. Leave me some comments. Tell me how much you liked it. Um, I like to hear people who I've helped. Post what you make. That's also great. Um, either on the YouTube comments or the CG Tooth comments. Yeah, have fun, guys.